Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to speak a bit about the expanding universe. Now this is referring to the fact that everything in the universe is constantly moving away. So it's moving away from a centre point, um, and we know that as a result of something called the Doppler effect. Okay, the Doppler effect. Now what this actually is, is the change, so it's the change in the observed wavelength observed wavelength so that's the wavelength that we can actually uh, detect due to the motion or the movement due to the movement of the wave source wave source now one really obvious example of this is when you hear a siren from a police car or an ambulance. Now it sounds different as the car speeds towards you and then speeds away from you. And that's because what's happening is the wavelength of that sound is changing. And therefore the frequency is changing. So because the wavelength changes, but the speed of the wave stays the same, that means that the frequency is also changing. Now if the frequency of the sound is changing, that means that the pitch of the sound is changing. And so therefore we can detect it being a higher and a lower pitch. Now if the uh, source, so if the source is travelling towards us, towards us, then we get a shift of an increased frequency increased frequency. For example, when a police car is traveling and it gets closer to you, it goes higher pitched and that's because the frequency is increased. So you'll hear it far away and then as it gets closer it goes da 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 and it, the frequency goes up so the pitch goes up. Okay, and when the source moves away from us, okay, so that's when the car goes past you and then it leaves then the frequency goes back down, so we get a reduced frequency. Okay, and remember, frequency and wavelength are going to have the opposite relationship, so a higher frequency means a lower wavelength. I'm just writing lambda for short, and a lower frequency means a higher wavelength. And the reason I've gone into this much detail in terms of frequency and wavelength is because it helps understand something known as red shift. Red shift. So what we can do is we can take light from um, space, basically, so coming from all different parts of space, and we can split it using a prism. So we can split light with prism. And that means we get a spectrum, okay, a spectrum of light, and we can see all the different components of the light. Okay, so let's say, for example, that light is coming in, Okay, let's just say white light like this from space. It's coming in. We split it up with a prism. And then what we get out are the colors of the spectrum. And that might look something like this. Okay. Now what's important is that in space, um, what happens is that some of the light is actually absorbed. This absorbed light might be absorbed by certain atoms which you find in the galaxy. So different elements will absorb different uh, wavelengths of light. For example, hydrogen and helium and things like that, they're going to absorb at different parts on the spectrum. So let's say for simplicity, we have absorption down here. That means that we won't get this part of the spectrum coming in. It will just be black. That's because the light hasn't been emitted. It's been absorbed. And then we might get another one, I don't know, maybe here. Okay. Now, because galaxies are made up of the same um, material, so hydrogen and helium and other elements like that, the absorption spectra, oops, the absorption spectra should be exactly the same. But what happens is that if we have a look at a galaxy which is further away, we might get a spectra that looks like this. So we get another spectra, but it may look like this and like that. Now you can see that these lines have actually moved. Okay, probably best to do that in a different color. So these lines here 
they have moved to the right. So this line has also moved to the right. Okay, And moving to the right means that the wavelength has gone up. Now let's have a look up here and remember that if the source is moving towards us, the frequency goes up but the wavelength goes down. If the source is moving away from us, then the frequency goes down and the wavelength goes up. So this tells us that the source of this light is moving away from us. Okay, And that is told to us by the Doppler effect. Now, if this is moving away from us, that means that the galaxy itself is moving away from us. And what's interesting is if we have a look at any galaxy, we can see that the same thing is happening. Everything is moving away. And it's not just moving away from us, everything is moving away from everything else. Now that sort of suggests to us that originally the universe started as one sort of ball of matter, if you like, and now everything is moving away from a point where it once began. Everything isn't just moving away from us, because it's not suggesting that the universe started at where we are. We are also part of the universe which is moving away from a central point. So we are also moving away from other galaxies as well. Okay, and also, if we have a look at galaxies that are further away, then this shift might be even greater. So it might be over to here, and we'll get um, the line down here, for example, okay? So further away means we get even more shift, and that means that those galaxies are moving away from us even faster. So the key points there are that everything, all galaxies, are moving away from us. Okay, also, because further galaxies have a larger redshift, it means further galaxies, further galaxies, are moving away faster than the ones which are closer to us. We are told that by the degree of red shift. Now because we don't have a special place in the galaxy, because we are not the center of our galaxy or the universe for that matter, of the universe we can conclude that everything in the universe is moving away from everything else. So everything is moving away from everything else. And so the universe is expanding. Universe is expanding. Okay. So that was an extremely important discovery. It was discovered in 1929 by a chap named Edwin Hubble. And obviously you will have heard Hubble... Um, before in terms of the Hubble telescope and that is exactly who it's named after. So Edwin Hubble concluded that the universe is expanding. Extremely important. So now we know that the universe is expanding we need to have a look at why it's expanding. And the most popular explanation we have at the moment for this is the Big Bang Theory. Okay so the Big Bang. Now this theory states that everything has been produced after an explosion from a very small single point. So an explosion from a small single point and it also suggests that space, matter and even time were created during the Big Bang. Okay, now this, uh, when it was first suggested, a lot of people uh, disagreed with it. A lot of scientists did not agree with this. And they had a different theory known as the steady state theory. Steady state theory. Okay, and what this suggested was that rather than just traveling apart as a result of an explosion, they suggested that the galaxies are actually being pushed apart. Okay, so there's something physically pushing them all the time rather than the result of one single event. So being pushed apart. Now they suggested that this was a result of matter entering the universe. So matter entering through things known as white holes. Through white holes. And you've probably heard of black holes and these are just suggested to be the opposite. Okay, we could spend all day talking about these things and the science of them and things like that and the different theories, but that 
is for another time. You don't need to know the ins and outs of black holes and white holes. Okay, now this is a problem because both these theories are perfectly viable in explaining why everything is moving away from everything else. Okay, and so there must be something that can separate uh, the two. And it turns out that there was, and in 1965, um, a piece of evidence came to light that did support the Big Bang Theory. And this was in the form of cosmic microwave background radiation. Cosmic microwave background radiation. So you could just say CMBR for short. Now this phenomenon is actually microwaves coming from every direction in space. Okay, so coming from every direction. Now the steady state theory couldn't explain the presence of this um, CMBR or cosmic microwave microwave background radiation but the big bang theory can and this suggests that high energy gamma so remember gamma rays are the most energetic rays in the electro in the electromagnetic spectrum gamma radiation was produced as a result of the explosion okay so produced as a result of that explosion and it has been traveling through space since then now remember, once the explosion occurred, that means that the radiation is traveling in all different directions and it's moving away from that center point. And remember, um, the Doppler effect states that when it's moving away, the wavelength is going to go up and the frequency will be going down. And so the increased wavelength has turned this gamma radiation over time into microwaves. So it has been red shifted far enough red shifted into microwaves, which have a much higher wavelength than the gamma rays. Okay, and you might be thinking, well, how do we detect it? There's actually a very simple way. If you've got an old TV, if you unplug the aerial, you'll remember that you get that white noise and there's all those fuzzy dots on the screen. Well, if you unplugged your aerial and there was no uh, microwaves at all, you wouldn't get anything on your screen. And that fuzziness and nothingness is a result of background microwaves. And that is how we can actually have a look at the cosmic microwave background radiation ourselves. Okay, so if you are asked um, to give a piece of evidence which supports the Big Bang but doesn't support the steady state theory, then you use cosmic microwave background radiation. Okay. Now, as everything is moving away from each other in the galaxy, um, you might, or in the universe, sorry, every galaxy is moving away from each other, you might wonder, well, will it ever stop? And that's obviously a question which no one at the moment can answer. Astronomers have found that the really distant galaxies are still moving away from each other and they are accelerating rather than decelerating. And this is a bit strange, really. Um, and so there must be actually a force not gravity, but something else, which is causing them to accelerate. And there are loads of different theories for this, and one of them is known as dark energy. Okay, so I'm not going to go into this too much because you don't really need to know anything about it, but um, dark energy is thought to be able to provide these galaxies with the energy which allows them to accelerate away from each other. Okay, so you just need to know that everything is accelerating away from each other. Um, the most accepted theory at the moment is the Big Bang Theory because it can explain everything. It can explain the moving away um, and the CMBR, whereas the steady state theory could only explain the moving away, but it couldn't explain those microwaves. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. That was a lot of information in a short space of time, so please feel free to pause or rewind the video as you need. But if you do have any questions on that, also feel free to send me an email using the link below or comment in the box and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.